What is the worst movie you've ever seen? No, I'm not talking about Grown Ups 2 or Transformers 2. I mean a movie so bad, so fundamentally broken, that it leaves a piss in your stomach or makes you feel frustrated and angry beyond any reasonable measure. This is a question I've been asking myself for a while, and I think it's about time to do something about it. So I've pulled up the list of the bottom 100 lowest rated movies on IMDb, and I'm going through them one by one to find the worst movie ever. Welcome to the search for the worst. Robot Monster sucks. It sucks real hard. It's quite an accomplishment for a movie that is only one hour long to feel like several hundred. But they managed it. The director, Phil Tucker, who was also responsible for classics like Dream Follies and the Cape Canaveral Monsters, is the mastermind behind this monster of a picture. Get it? Because the movie's called Robot Monster and I called it a monster. It's yet another movie that suffers from something I like to call Why Couldn't We Have Seen That Movie Instead? Syndrome. The idea being that a race of gorilla people who have a dumb looking bucket on their head have somehow managed to kill everyone on the planet bar half a dozen who have hidden away in the desert or something. Thing is, they don't really make this fact very clear. So you spend the first quarter of the movie thinking to yourself, Wait, who are you? What is happening? Why are we in the desert? It's also hilariously clear that this movie was made on an excessive budget of a paperclip and half an eaten packet of stale crackers. It's so, so, so cheap. There are about, let me think, three locations in the movie. There's the exciting cave where the robot monster hangs around. There's a hole in the floor with a fence around it where the humans are hiding. Oh, and some barren hills in the desert. The structure of this motion picture is pretty basic. In fact, I can sum it up with one single word. Boring scene in cave where Robo Gorilla talks to other Robo Gorilla, followed by a boring scene of the humans standing around in their boring hideout, then topped off with a bit of Robo Gorilla aimless wandering. Repeat a few times, the end. In fact, the entire flick was filmed over the course of a whopping four days! Has no sets and was 100% filmed outside, and it shows. Supposedly, the director tried to kill himself due to the negative reception this film got. He apparently tried to shoot himself in the head, but missed. Well, I guess as the famous pale anthropologist Louis Leakey said, I put a bullet in the back of the crocodile's neck just behind the head, thus killing it. If a crocodile is hit in any other part of its anatomy, it disappears into the water and is irrecoverable. Wait, I think I think I've got the wrong quote here, just give me a sec. We're immediately introduced to a couple of kids who are playing a game of who can be the least convincing stiff and awkward child actor. They find the aforementioned cave, where a couple of dudes who claim to be archaeologists are doing whatever archaeologists do. The family then have a picnic. This is what I meant by it being very confusing, because it certainly doesn't seem like they're in a post-apocalyptic world. Well, technically it isn't at this point, but you'll find out why later. But it still, it still makes, makes no, no sense, sense and feels, and feels weird. weird! The kid runs around by himself, then lightning strikes from the sky and he falls over. Then it cuts to these completely unrelated clips of a lizard and a crocodile with a spine attached to its back having a fight, and some stop-motion triceratops having a tussle as well. Like, it's totally just... rolling around with it. Okay, stop-motion. What is happening? I, I, I have no idea what that was supposed to be. Who or what? I, I am any... what was that? When the kid wakes up, there are some mysterious machines just sort of there now. One of them looks like it's emitting some kind of pollen? Or bees? Watch out, they might sting you, kid! Get out of there! I eventually figured out what it's supposed to be. They're bubbles. It's a bubble machine. Oh, it's bubbles. They're bubbles. They're not bugs or bees. They're bubbles. They only just trigger because future... Bubbles equal future, everybody. You know, that's been set up and everything. That's a sci-fi trope. Bubbles! Because when you think of post-apocalyptic robot gorilla monsters, you definitely think of fun little bubbles. The kid hears a noise and outstorms our first look at the robot monster. It's a fucking piss take. Oh, there he is. The monster robot. Sorry, I mean... Oh, he's actually... He's a gorilla. He's a gorilla with a helmet on. He looks really quite wide. I wasn't expecting that. By wide, I mean fat. It goes on the little monitor that's set up in the desolate, isolated cave for some reason, and has a chat with his leader who looks identical to him. They finally explain that Earth is their only rival. Earth is our only rival. And that's why they murdered everyone except a few they missed. Their reasoning is that the human race is becoming too intelligent. You're not very happy, what's the matter? No, no, what, no, why? What? What? Next, we see the last remaining group of humans who do nothing but stand around looking disengaged. They mention something about the older guy developing a cure for all diseases. I would have never developed a serum without him. 
the trouble was he he wouldn't admit a serum I was good does in what anyone who could fix that fuse turns you into not a gorilla to... but conveniently has made all eight or so of the remaining people immune to the robo gorilla death rays extension roman xj2 reporting to guidance roman Oh yeah, the official name of the Robo Gorillas is the Romans. You know, like the way humans are called humans. Instead of Hugh, it's Ro, like like short for robot. Despite the fact that Romans are a thing that actually exists, and I doubt it's a play on words because I think it's safe to assume that writer Wyatt or Dung wasn't capable of such nuanced calligraphy, so it was definitely an accident. Some dude shows up at the human hideout who explains that the Romans are in fact here to finish them off. And by Romans, I mean one single troop who is probably lost or too stupid to find a way back home. They devise a foolproof plan to rejig their monitor to get in contact with a couple of other humans they know are alive somewhere. But it turns out that these other two people have somehow got hold of a rocket ship, which they attempt to fly to some kind of space station they mentioned offhand earlier. But unluckily for them, the Romans... Fuck it, I refuse to call them that anymore, I'm not doing it. I don't really understand why they decided that the robot part of them is more significant than the gorilla part of them that makes them 90% of their body, but there you go. The robot gorilla uses the force on the rocket and explodes. They keep showing this weird jet flying around as well. Come on, look at that. It looks like it's made out of fucking plasticine. They never really explain why exactly, but it looks like a cheap plastic toy on a piece of string. Probably because it's a cheap plastic toy on a piece of string. We're about halfway through the movie now, and nothing more exciting than that really happens. For pretty much no reason at all, two of the characters have a romantic subplot where they want to get married. What? <laughs> <laughs> then they get married, then get chased by the robot gorilla after they intelligently decide to make out in the desert. Out of nowhere, the robot gorilla decides that it wants to have emotions. To be like the human. To laugh, feel, want. Why are these things not in the plan? And becomes infatuated with the young lady. So he wanders around in the hills for a while, looking like a moron in an oversized gorilla outfit with a bucket on his head. Because that's... That is exactly what he is. He comes across the young girl who's by herself in the post-apocalyptic desert with the, where there are confirmed aliens that are gonna kill her, probably. So he picks her up and carries her away, then brutally murders her off screen. It's really unclear that he murdered her because the only clue we get is that they find her mutilated dead body, start crying, then bury her. Actually, that's about as clear as you can get. Robo Gorilla eventually ends up in a fight with a newlywed couple and deflects all attempts of assault with its Robo Gorilla strength, which ends with the bloke being strangled and the woman being hoisted away by the beast. Luckily, the bloke manages to get back to the others to tell them what happened, then dies because movie. Meanwhile, the Robo Gorilla awkwardly pulls off the lady's shirt strap thing and never does anything more than that before tying her up. Thank God. The dumb kid from earlier spouts out stupid plan to save the lady by distracting the gorilla monster while the others rescue her. Are you keeping up with this? Because it's very complex. The adults who can think logically agree to the plan because they're stupid. He can get us in the ravine if he promises easy death. You slip in and grab Alice when he comes out after me. That might work. There's no time to lose. He promises easy death. Easy death. And once the plan is in action, the kid gets strangled by the Robo Gorilla. Great plan, you fucking geniuses! But luckily, the other robot gorilla is watching from his spaceship or something and decides that the other robot gorilla has failed to fulfill his task of murdering the remaining people, so he zaps him with some kind of death ray. That's, that's convenient movie. And suddenly we cut back to the stop motion dinosaurs and crocodile lizard fight from earlier, which I still don't understand why is in the movie at all. But finally there's a super huge plot twist to wrap everything up in a nice old little bow. So he's exploding the ground? What, what, what was any of that? I see. He's alright. We just want to make sure you get up with everything you fell down with. Hey! I found him! Oh, that's quite a bump there, boy. What happened? Oh, huh? no. You all right? No, no, no. You're almost getting dark and no Johnny. You're alive? Oh, my. Joke? It was a dream. Well, was that a dream or was it? <laughs> the whole movie was a fucking dream. Fuck you. It turns out the entire movie was a dream inside the kid's head after he fell down and knocked himself out earlier. Fuck this movie. He even says, Boy, was that a dream or was it? Boy, was that a dream or was it? Boy, was that a dream or was it?
As if this movie couldn't be any more of a fuck you. I bet they thought they were real clever when they came up with that as well. And then to add insult to injury, as they all walk away from the cave laughing like idiots, a robot gorilla ghost comes wandering out of the depths multiple times on repeat. As if it has some kind of meaning or something. The end. It's ironic that this movie was a production of Three Dimension Pictures Incorporated, because it looked pretty 2D to me. <coughs> I guess it's because I lost my 3D glasses. Well, I guess as Louis Leakey always said, raising funds for my fourth expedition proved to be very difficult. Wait, that's not right. That quote has nothing to do with anything. Oh, here's the right one. I have examined the stomach contents of seven aardvarks. A little bit more relevant. So, Robot Monster, that was a real piece of shit, wasn't it? Arguably the most minimal out of all the movies I've seen for this so far. Almost insultingly so. Oi, Robot Monster, just because you're released in the 50s doesn't mean you get a pass for being fucking awful. Completely devoid of charm or unintentional humour, Robot Monster is the disastrous result of when an inept man gets a hold of an inept script and somehow manages to work a camera long enough to squat out a miserable fecal discharge such as this. Too boring to recommend, too short to get obsessively angry over. It's nothing more than a forgettable blip in the long history of shitty movies. That's why it deserves its middling place in the ranks. Maybe slightly more towards the bad end because of that atrocious ending. But in the wise words of the great Louis Leakey, although we followed that hyena for the best part of half an hour, we never caught up with it. And up next in the search for the worst is... The Bat People. That sounds like something a guy called Jerry Jameson would make. Jeez. So those are my thoughts on the masterpiece that is Robot Monster. Why didn't they straight up call it Robot Gorilla anyway? Or Robot Monsters, at least, because there are, what, two of them? But anyway, what did you think about the movie? Did it look gloriously awful? Or skin-crawlingly boring? Did you like or dislike the video? Tell me in the comments below. Make sure to check out the rough cut of me trying to watch the movie for the first time with the annotation or in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. I'll see you next time. Bye!